Yeah, that's perfect. We're good, we're good. Yeah, we were, I was down in Florida for, I just went for like Christmas, New Year's. I did, man. Everyone's like partying, the weather's nice. You can come back to like minus 20 and it's just brutal. <laughs> <laughs> it was at the time of his life. I did, I really did have the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can got you. I'm just made for like warm weather parties. That's like what I'm made for. I feel like everybody is though. It's such a generic comment. I like partying in the summer. Like. <laughs> definitely better for sure i mean i mean you can't party outside in the uh, winter yeah, yeah. so well you can't i try ricky, ricky of... will party anywhere uh, <laughs> I, I honestly i really will how <laughs> was it for you guys in, did you prefer being in orlando like during the beginning of the season like is it just like you miss home or is it nice to be in like sunny weather like so was there was it was both yeah like it was nice to be in sunny weather obviously you know during march and april um, and March and April was really nice in Orlando. Um, it's like not too hot. No, it's perfect, yeah. you know, because then it gets to like June and July and like it's 30 it's, plus every day. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> and it's yeah. humid. As, yeah. Yeah. So humid, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, we, we, I would have rather like to, you know, things, I would have rather things be normal and play here in yeah. Toronto in front of the BMO field because, you know, there's nothing like that, but it was all right. Uh, it was a good experience, to be honest. Uh, you know, aside from everything that was going on and, and the reason why we were there and everything, uh, it was a good experience. We were in Orlando. It sucked to play. It was weird because we were using um, Orlando City's home. Because they're a new team too, right? Uh, Fairly new. No, not now. Four? I think they've been in the league five, six years, five, something six years. like that. But they're, I think their stadium is pretty new still. And um, but it was weird. We, were, we, were, we would play our games, home home games. So we were the home team and no fans. I think we played them actually one game in their home. But we were the home team and, and we had no fans. And then like two weeks before that or after, I, I, I can't remember, we played them, them being the home team, full stadium. <laughs> so just like they crazy. wouldn't sell tickets for you guys? Like I don't get it. Well, we're the home team. So, like no, but like, no but like, season ticket, holders. but like nobody could buy tickets to go, <laughs> or people just wouldn't buy tickets to go. No, they didn't want that. I don't. I think they could have if they wanted to. They could have like sold tickets. Yeah, but they didn't, they didn't want it. fans to go there and then cheer against the Canadian team. Yeah, because you know, interesting. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. They're gonna do that, especially yeah. if we play. If we sell the tickets against Orlando City, it's just gonna be another away game anyway. So at yeah. least we try to gain some advantage. By having nobody By there. By having nobody yeah. there. Makes sense. You know I have I mean? a question for you actually on that topic. And this is a, a buddy of ours, a good buddy, JR, has this theory of home field advantage. I'm not going to tell you what his theory is, but I want to ask you, do you feel like as a pro athlete, mm -hmm. do you feel when you play, you the home field advantage is real for you? Do you feel you play better at home or do you feel you go at every time and it doesn't matter where you play? Like, do you think it's essentially what I'm asking? Do you think home field advantage is a myth or is it real in, in pro sports? I think. Especially in soccer. Yeah. I think in, in, in soccer, it is real. Uh, personally, I would say, like, it depends, too, which stadium you go to. Some stadiums are more um, intimidating than others. But sometimes being the away team or being the away, you know, player could sometimes also be an advantage because it could get you going. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, fans against you. That yeah. get that gets some guys going. The 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 home advantage is is real because there 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 have been some games where a full stadium is going to give you that energy for some reason. It just because I've played in empty empty stadiums, so now I know for sure. Yeah. It's it's a it's an advantage, and I've played in, uh, like full stadium against me. It's it's in it's it could be intimidating yeah. depending on. Where you are. So there you have it. In soccer, home field is an advantage. JR, oh, that's are. for you, buddy. Our buddy JR goes to a lot of sporting events. A lot. Like, probably more than anyone, anybody that we know. Like he'll go, and he goes by himself. Diehard yeah. sports guy. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure about soccer. Any team, but too. Any anything. Team. Yeah. Yeah. He just wants to be there. And he like he follows it very actively. Yeah. So you know, he, you know, every time someone says those like... You watch the sports cast. Someone say, you know, it's a must-win game. Or it's a home field. Like, the, the crowd made that, a difference on that the one. The ones yeah. they say, the old, like... um. 
well, old adages that people say. Yeah. There's like there's never been stats to prove these like 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 that factually yeah. exactly essentially. Yes. So every time someone says it, he's always like, "This is just a, a fan say this, right?" Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. talk to pro athletes. He goes, "Pros are pros for a reason. They play. Doesn't matter where. They're still they're gonna play as good. Yeah. yeah anywhere, yeah. but soccer, we've never had this debate. Because soccer, yeah. the fans probably are the most unruly yeah. of any sport. Like fireworks, throwing stuff. Yeah. I I think. Even more so in like, if you're in South America and Europe, Europe yeah. it's even more of an advantage because, for example, with the national team, um, there's been there's been stories. I've heard these stories uh, from past players in World Cup qualifying uh, that on the way to, um, in a game in uh, Honduras, that the, <laughs> crazy, they're walking out to the field First of all, the the night before, the fans would go outside the hotel and start doing fireworks. Yeah, the playing whole drums night. and everything. The whole night, this. so you don't sleep. So that's already an advantage. And then at the stadium, a true story, the fans were had bags, and they're throwing them. They're they're full of liquid, and they're throwing them at the players, at the weight uh, players while they're walking. And these guys are getting hit, and then they're smelling. Oh no! It's piss. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, this is in Honduras. In Honduras. So this stuff is real. Like that's why I say in, in soccer there 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 is I, home advantages. There's, wait, there's one little segue <laughs> here because if I'm not mistaken, you guys are playing Honduras next. Yeah, in, yeah, is it yeah. in Honduras too? It's in Honduras. We're we're gonna, gonna coat, you yeah. a, I got ready to give you a rain jacket. <laughs> no, don't piss at you. <laughs> yeah, that was a story. I, I I mean I I wasn't there for that one, but the, I just the picture older you guys say it. <laughs> oh no, I'm Dodge, dodging piss. <laughs> Piss bags I'm like in the matrix or something. I'm sprinting out of the tunnel. I'm sprinting. I'm not getting hit with piss. That's crazy. There's no way. Yeah. No, no, no. I can't. When you, you were talking about Orlando too, like the idea of derbies. Yeah. Because yeah. der- very, I don't think there's many places where derbies happen. You mean in North America or in general? Just in general, like in pro sports. I don't think derbies happen in many places. In in soccer. So it's, yeah, soccer. Like you oh, think you Ro- mean in Roman really... Roman Lazio is a derby. Yeah. Um, like in football, Giants and uh, things share the same stadium, but they only play like once every five years. I think. I didn't even think oh, they play once. Sorry, I'm gonna ask a dumb question here. I didn't. A derby means you share the same stadium, yeah. and it's when the, it's when two no, teams that share so. the same stadium play each other. You can, you can. A derby is a no, derby is a, is a rivalry. It's a rivalry, and a derby is more the same city. You share the same city. You share the same city. You share I thought the it was same, same stadium. City. No, I no, know the, no. Ro- the Rome Lazio derby is like one of the biggest, like most so like those, craziest thing. Those uh, derbies can be a little bit more because you share the same stadium. It could be more intense. Uh, maybe you can make the argument, but like, uh, yeah, in, in Italy, there's there's two. There's the Roma Lazio share the same stadium, and there's, Inter and Milan. That's it. Yeah, share that's the, the same second stadium. One. So those derbies are kind of special in that sense. Yeah. Um, Danielle, what is it? Okay, so yeah. it's basically close, yeah, yeah, close by cities. It's it's it, there. It's a rivalry. Yeah. It's a it's. I thought a derby, the same a, a derby, the like a lot city, of yeah. history goes into a derby. It's not kind of you know, it doesn't. Just get, it's not just proximity. It means yeah, like, it usually is. For example, in uh, in Argentina, there's two teams, the Racing and Independiente. Their stadium. I love how you turn the accent on for those. There, yeah, yeah, you have to. <laughs> you you got to say legit. The 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 stadiums are like a hundred meters from each other. And they're eternal rivals, like crazy. So like across the river, like literally across the street. And even uh, Liverpool Everton is like this. I yeah. Liverpool Everton is <laughs> a big derby, but there's another like Liverpool also has a rivalry. It's not a derby, but it's a big rivalry match with Manchester United. So that's okay. more of like they, those fans hate each other. Yeah, yeah. But a derby is like um, the Merseyside derby is Liverpool Everton, and that's because they're in the, they share the same city. Okay. I'm it's interesting. Si- and like Barcelona, Madrid, I guess they call it El Clasico, but I guess that's just a rivalry. It's not like... Yeah, it's not a derby. call that a derby. It's not a derby. Okay, a, That's okay. why they call it El Clasico yeah, yeah. because it's just... The, a, a Clasico is... Is a rivalry match. It's a big yeah. rivalry match. I think we talked about this last time. Maybe you were We said it was somebody. It was you, maybe Liam. But I think the the coolest name for a new rivalry is El Trafico. El Tra- the L one in yeah, LA. Yeah, the one in LA. That's yeah, like it's, it's usually when people rip off a name, it's not good. Yeah, it's yeah, not funny. It was good. That was pretty funny. Like, that, that was pretty- it's crazy. I was actually I was in LA this this off season and um I, I got stuck in that traffic. It's it's, it's real. Terrible. You can't move. Oh, it's terrible. It is horrible. I had to, I had to tell the the Uber driver to to stop on the side of the road because I had to piss. We were there. We were in the car for like two hours. I didn't expect that. Where like where were you going well, to and like from? Me. I was going from. Um, I was up. Uh, 
I was like above like uh, more north than uh, Beverly Hills. I forget what, what it was called the, the the place, but I was like a little bit north of of uh, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills. Yeah. And I had to go all the way down to um, we we're heading to Newport Beach. That's like no traffic, an hour nice. and uh, maybe a little bit more. Um, and we thought we were going, we we were avoiding rush hour, but there's 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 no, no yeah, it's so always rush, rush hour. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's always rush hour over there. So. So yeah, I got trapped in that, and and I asked him, man, we gotta pull over. Or else. <laughs> it's game over. Got we gotta pull over, and he and he pulled over. No, so. I was gonna say about that the derby, and I don't even we got off traffic there, but off traffic, off topic. Um, <laughs> the, I saw the derby in in Rome, Rome versus Lazio, yeah, and it's like that's one of like the crazy ones in Italy. Mm. And I remember, so we parked in a certain area, and I had my jersey on, Roma jersey, because I got family from there too, all Roma friends. So I had my Roma jersey. Okay, my cousin's like, you gotta take it off. I was like why? It's like. Cause we're kind of parking on like almost like a border where the parking lot is. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? He's like, when Roma is home, they get 75% of the surrounding area to park. And that's where you sit yeah. or like a two thirds of it. And then Lazio gets the other third. Right. Right. When it's reversed, they switch. So inside the stadium, it's not like colors in this and that. It's just like that. So we're all there. We take off our jerseys. We walk in, we get in and it's just two thirds of the stadium is just that kind of burgundy yellow mm. Roma color. The other third is just empty, just completely empty. And then you got, the rows are just fully lined. There's a man on every other row mm. in the yellow jacket, security. And you see, it's just crazy. It's just fans packed, f- f- smoke bombs going off. And this is when Totti was still playing too. So like oh, yeah, people yeah. going nuts, they have the Totti chance and he was God out there. Yeah, like, yeah, literally yeah, God yeah. out there. And then all of a sudden the, the match starts. And you know when you like kick a, an anti or something? That, not an anti, an anti uh, hill. You see the ants just mar- like all, everything comes out. Yeah. That's what it literally looked like. All these baby blue jerseys just stormed <laughs> down yeah. and within three minutes you got a third of this whatever 40,000 person stadium yeah. slammed yeah 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 yeah. when you leave you get out and you hear the stories about people going by on mopeds like with a knife just attached to their hip and they just slash people going down on their mopeds after it, the game it's crazy yeah yeah I I don't how, know if how I, wild is that like it, imagine going to your kid going to watch a soccer game you get stabbed by someone <laughs> <on a> <laughs> it's, it's crazy I laugh but it's not yeah, funny yeah, it's, like, it is crazy at that point like, I kid Throw the piss at me, fuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, fuck, take like, piss any day over. I slash the leg, <laughs> man. No, that that that's crazy. That's like really how it is, because like these fans, like you 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 lived it, you yeah. were there. You like they they love their club. It's their it's their life, really. Yeah, like yeah. it's it's crazy. I love it. I love it. And um, yeah, the I guess the away team had to wait. They they had their own section. They had to wait until yeah all the Roma fans were yeah. in or something like that. Yeah, I think it was part of like scare attack. I don't know. Or... It's I think it's so they don't the gates. I think maybe so they don't cross paths. Yeah, they, they don't cross paths. So that, that's gates the reason too. for yeah, it. They have they, their own gates too. Because like, I've seen it. I've seen like a video like that once. It was on Instagram or something. It's like they march. Yeah, it happened actually when I was at Barcelona. I can't remember where they playing. Maybe Juve. I think it was a Champions League game. And I was actually at Barca. I was with Kia. I just got like lucky that I was in Spain at that time. He wanted to get tickets, so we went. And I think the same thing. It wasn't as much of the, the stadium. It was like just behind the away goal. But the game kicked off, and then they let. I think they let them in. Yeah. I think they held yeah, them for yeah. safety purposes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, <clears throat> if you cross, like, there's the in Italy, it's called the the ultras. I think. Yeah. And so the ultras are like basically the the hooligans, like yeah. the the big supporters Nuts. group, the yeah, supporter yeah. group. <clears throat> and um, if those two cross paths, like, they will fight. And oh, if, yeah. if if you're wearing. If you bring a baby blue, even a T-shirt in that in that section, you're you're, you're oh, done. No. What's that movie with the guy from Sons of Anarchy, Charlie Hunnan? He's in a movie uh, about I think it's called Hooligans. Maybe Danielle, you might be able to find it. It's about like soccer supporters and they just like go it, around ba- bashing people. Like, it's almost like a. I wouldn't even. It's like for most places in in Europe, let's say. Being a soccer supporter is like being in a gang that's not as crazy and doesn't do illegal shit. But it, like the serious ones would be a, like equal to being in a gang. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like you will yes. die for yeah, your team, yeah, 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 and yeah. you will kill someone if they cross your yeah, team. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's just, that's exactly what it is. I, I I'm trying to remember the 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 movie. The movie. You know what I'm trying to talk about? What's it called? Green Street, Green Street Hooligans, and they're Green they're based in um, Premier League supporters, right? Okay, yeah. Is it good? I saw I, something. I can't remember. There used to be this. There's this guy. Uh, he's a famous actor in England. I think his his name is Danny Dyer. Um, he was part of a, a movie called The Football Factory, which was similar. I've heard um, of, I've never seen it, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it. very similar. Then he did a spinoff. He like hosted this, um, I guess this show called The Football Factories. 
and he did it around England. So he went to all of the hooligan groups in England and, and actually like interviewed the main guys and like it and and there you you got to learn that like yeah it's like kind of run like a little gang kind of yeah there's levels then he did it, international yeah. and he did like he went to argentina he went to brazil he went to turkey and like is like interviewing like these like it's kind of like mafia kind of it's crazy and he's interviewing these guys it was so interesting vice did crazy. a document not a documentary like a docu-series on them too. hooligans yeah. Yeah. yeah i've yeah. seen something i don't know which one yeah, his name might have been that's vice. crazy because some of the Eastern maybe. European country stuff, oh, like those guys are oh, crazy. Man, Eastern Europeans are just not crazy. holy. Yeah. Oh, they, I, they'll they're, stab people just for like I, looking at them wrong. Honestly, <laughs> there, there might be a team that I think that it's like part of their thing is that you they like, they just go to fight like they get in a yeah. fight before the game. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. It's like you ever seen the videos of like fans that like they can't get in because a certain section are barricaded and they'll like boost each other up yeah, over yeah. like like like. 10 feet high stinks, climb in and just start throwing shit at people. Bro, that's what happened like- when we went to the game in, a- in Athens. <clears throat> we went to watch uh, FC Olympiacos or something. Our buddy, you might, do you know Daniel Martinez? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we were in, uh, I'm so mad I missed that game. So I'm an Olympia- Olympiacos fan. And my one of my good, uh, really good friends, uh, Dimitri Kitazakos, he like he, he lived out there. He lives here, and I used to go to games all the time. So my brother got married in 2019, and it was like late in the year. And who did they play? AK Athens, and what? like it was the day yeah, after yeah. the wedding. Where I mean, I was super hungover. And he's like, you guys want to go to the game? These guys all went to Olympia Ghost game. Like got the jerseys of and, and I got my Greek lady, Greek lettering on the back. Yeah, so I got yeah. my last name in Greek. Can't remember anything. But <laughs> So the thing is, I didn't know they're dry stadiums. Most European uh, yeah. stadiums Barcelona. are dry. Yes. Barcelona, yeah. I didn't know that. Boost, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And for obvious reasons, you just don't think about yeah. it. So at, before the game, we're watching these like basically kids. They sell beers in a grocery bag. You're like, why in a grocery bag? And mm. you're just, I'm not putting anything together. Mm. And all of a sudden, people are buying them, and you buy them, you chuck them in the bag over. Because, like, three or four beers. That was like, happening at the stadium in Greece? Yeah. And then you've got kids, like, literally boosting each other's up. One kid sits on top, catches the beers in the bag, throws them down to his dad on the other side and stuff. I'm like, Hell what amazing. the fuck is happening? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I've never been to a and game the in Greece, barricaded glass. Yeah. Man, it's crazy. Have you, besides, like, obviously playing all this stuff, have you been to a game as a fan? Like, any memorable games you've been to? Or do you not yeah. attend games often? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, as a kid, I didn't get to attend much. We did, we didn't have Toronto C here, and I, I didn't. It was really like the Toronto Lynx or something back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Even that I was mean, like the amateur league. Yeah, game. yeah. And honestly, like I, I hadn't gone to much of those games, um, so I wasn't able to go to a lot of games. Um, I remember though, I got the opportunity with my local team. We went to we did Argentina and Uruguay. I don't know if I said this story last time, actually. Say I was with you guys. A year and a half ago, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, but actually, almost two so years. I went to, uh, in Argentina, <laughs> is the arguably, I think, is the biggest rivalry in football in the whole world. Boca Juniors versus River Plate. The biggest rivalry. <laughs> Craziest rivalry. Really? Yeah, yeah, crazy. Sorry, Boca Juniors. I know Boca Juniors versus River Plate? And River Plate. Okay. And so there are two biggest teams in Argentina. Huge history rivalry. Two Any biggest, like, famous players that came out of there? Yeah, like, um, I mean, <coughs> oof, lots of players that played for both teams. Uh, Boca's a popular team. Juan Roman Raquel, um, Alexis Sanchez was in River Plate, uh, Radman Falcao. So many players, I, I mean, from the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Like, like lots. M- Maradona played for Boca Juniors. Mm-hmm. We One year we played soccer with the Boca Juniors jerseys. Which one? Blue with the yellow shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly which one's I got them the last year we played because they're, Boca's they're sick. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. that's Boca. So. Yeah, yeah. I went uh, to the game. Uh, we, we, our coach got tickets to, get to that game, which is amazing. Which is it's it's a hard ticket to get down there, and we're at River Plate Stadium, so it's a big stadium. They have like the track, they have the track and everything, so the fans are kind of a little bit away from the pitch, but huge stadium, probably like sixty thousand. Um, but like like similar to what you're saying, so. Um, they have a little section for the Boca fans, maybe like 5,000, 10,000 fans, 5,000 at the top. So the game is played, whatever, crazy atmosphere, amazing. Uh, Boca, uh, Boca Juniors wins 1-0. So the, the, for the same reasons in, in Roma Lazio, one set of fans has to leave the stadium first and the other one leaves after. Boca Juniors was supposed to leave the stadium first. Because they won... To to taunt everybody else, 
they stood in the they stayed in their seats for chanting and singing for another hour and a half so we we were with the river play fans we couldn't leave until they were done they had to finish and leave all of them per, the premises before everybody in the stadium could so they leave. just lo- like basically lock in the section we the everybody can't leave nobody can leave until they leave and because they won wow, they, the they knew this fact they knew this and they kept chanting, we won, and they're, they're singing up. yeah, 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 for like an hour. Do. An because hour. Because if they let out the fans first, they're going to wait outside the stadium for them. <laughs> and just, they're all dead. Them. Well, like, I'm sure they would have, uh, like, they would have held them back until everybody was gone. And, and they had poli- police escorts and everything because it's crazy down there. But they, we had to wait for them to, to leave, and they wouldn't leave because they Come won. And, and they knew that everybody had to wait for them, so they stayed. And for me, like, that introduced me to, like, the real, like, passion. Like, oh, yeah. this, is, yeah. this is serious over here, you know? Like, That's amazing crazy. experience. Like, you got to – if you, you get a chance, go on YouTube and search Boca vs. River Plate. The atmosphere is incredible. Boca Juniors is actually better at the Boca Stadium because you're just, like, on top. The fan, Sorry. Your fans are, like, on top of the, of the field. It, it's like uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. That's what I love. I love when you see like, because again, that's the thing about soccer, specifically soccer and basketball. Fans are normally right there. Yeah, yeah. Like you see the altercations all the time. Like soccer, you see like fans like spitting on players, like yeah. the toilet paper and stuff. Yeah. Basketball, you see kind of all you see like LeBron going at it with somebody yeah, like, yeah. every six months or something. Hockey, you don't see it as much. Football, you don't really see it as much. You yeah. see it more in like positive manner in football. Like people yeah. jump into the stands and stuff. But in soccer, it's crazy. Oh, it's, you get like things thrown at you all the time. Yeah, some places they they can't even allow like fans close to the to the field because. Or you see like the the fence. Yeah, yeah, you see, like exactly. a legit fence. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, in Boca they have the fence. Yeah, like a huge fence, and the fans will still like climb, climb it and and watch the game like at the sitting top. literally at the top, throwing beers over the top. Oh, That's crazy, it. crazy. That's What's the craziest fun. thing that's ever happened to you? Like with like interaction with a fan? Anyone ever throw something crazy at you or something? Nah, no, nothing too bad. Mm, I mean, I've been in some crazy atmospheres. Um, nothing like crazy has happened where it's like, whoa, like th- this is you know, like I was scared or something. Um, I do remember one game. W- we had a game in Mexico, Mexico City. We were playing against uh, Club America. Um, at the Azteca and on the way to the game one we couldn't we couldn't uh travel in our big bus we had to go in three different spinner vans like uh, tinted spinner yeah. vans because apparently like just in case like cartel wanted to be crazy come on that day, yeah, hey, yeah we laugh about that that's, that's fucking not that's laughing matter terrifying. that's literally like i think the reason also we had to take a different highway for the same reason we didn't want uh our bus to or our bands to get stopped and then we're robbed or whatever like we have Jesus. to go to the game so we had we had police escorts and we had to take a different highway so we had to leave a little bit earlier <laughs> then we get to the stadium we're about we're going around man we're around the stadium but to get into like the parking lot where where we go um you're kind of driving in between like uh, like literally the neighborhood is right there and there's a neighborhood and the fans are are starting to arrive because the uh, fans there arrive there pretty early for their team so they see us they realize it's us and then all you see is the the beers coming <sighs> hitting the car boom yeah like hitting our vans i saw one hit the the windshield and and honestly the guy chucked it pretty good and and the windshield didn't even shake it was, uh, that was, <laughs> I was like, damn, these sprinters are serious, man. <laughs> Must be bullet. Man, that's, a, that's a good Mercedes ad right yeah. now. <laughs> Mercedes pay us. Holy. Mercedes can handle a beer from a Yeah, yeah crazy. <laughs> like they, he chucked it. Boom. All that's all you hear. Boom. And I was like, oh shit. Like, I could give me a sprinter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was that was that was crazy. Um but other than that, no, nothing like crazy. Just like amazing atmosphere as I've been a part of for sure. For Team Canada, you probably play like you probably play in South America, like Central South America, more often. Is that fair to say than, than with like TFC? Like, um, it's or is it pretty even? I would say even. So okay. it'll be Central America. Um, with TFC, we've had the Concacaf, uh, the Concacaf Champions yep. League, so we've been to uh, a few places. And then with Canada, to be honest, we hadn't really had to do Central America uh, too much because before, I mean, we weren't. 
we never had those games. Yeah, now yeah. we're World Cup qualifying is yeah. where you get those games, and now we're this is the first time we're in the the last round in I don't know how many years, twenty years or yeah. something. So I personally haven't uh, experienced that with the national team, but we're I'm yeah, about yeah. to. Yeah. I was gonna. I was actually gonna ask if it, if you ever experienced that, like if it's ever been any dicey anywhere besides Mexico. But it also just gave us a segue to talk about. Obviously, you just made a point of like Canada now you're in the final round, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, it's been very a, big deal. It's been a long time. A, yeah, I would say honestly, huge deal. It's like yeah, I mean, it's no, the for biggest sure. stage in the world. Yeah, I mean we're 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 fighting to be in a World Cup, and we're we're in the last round, and right now we're in first place. So. It's uh it's it's good it's good days right now um and we're all pretty confident and we believe that you know we're we're gonna do this we're gonna we're gonna get Canada to a World Cup but you know there's still six games left tough games we gotta go to Central America and just to give like uh just to kind of explain what we're going through this next uh, window it's tough because we gotta play in Honduras away which is always piss. tough for watch out for the piss yeah for, of course. <laughs> Talked about this <laughs> for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. <laughs> then we gotta come back. We gotta come back from Honduras. We gotta come back here to uh, Hamilton and maybe playing possibly minus twenty. Yeah. And then we gotta go all the way back down and play El Salvador. So this is a tough window for the travel and everything. Like you're trying to play ninety minute games, intense games, in between recover, but then you have the flight, travel. the travel. And you're going back and forth. It, it's it's going to be no a, time zones. It's going to be nice. a tough one. I think time zones are roughly the same. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Luckily, how far? Like, um, <clears throat> how many weeks apart are the games? Is it like a three week span? Is it like a couple months? Like a- nah, th- this window is, is one week. So we play the three th- games in one week. The twenty seventh, the thirtieth, and the second. Oh wow. Okay, so that is yeah. Yeah, yeah. For that context, makes it sound a lot. Oh yeah, like we had three it weeks. Like maybe you have like a Saturday, 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 no, Saturday or something. No, no, no. Because no. with the national shit. team. Your national team you're only with for a certain period of time. You know, you, you get called to your national team. You go for a week or 10 days usually, play your games, and you go back to your club team. Um, There's so many different clubs coming from all over the world. Yeah, right? so many yeah. players exactly coming from different clubs. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be it's a tough one. It's a tough one. So, but who's of all the teams you're playing now, I'm sure they're all like it's the final round. So they've all made it there. They all have merit. They're all good in their own ways. Is there one team that like – has given you guys difficulty? Is the one that you have to feel like you have to prepare more? Honduras, El Salvador, well, our, like our, all... our toughest opponent this window will be the U.S. So we play the U.S. here. That that's that be... one in Hamilton. In Hamilton. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, right. That's gonna be a tough one. It's that's a little rivalry, you know. So that that that's gonna be nice. Um, and they're right now second place, just one point uh, under us. One or two, I think one. Um, they're gonna be tough, but these games in Honduras and Central America, and even El Salvador, they're they're just tough for so many different reasons, and like it's hard to explain. You gotta like experience, and because the little travel, even just from the hotel, and you're eating like you're eating food maybe that you're not used to, and, and yeah. things like that. It, a, a it's all a factor. It's a different environment, completely. exactly. So, and it's hot. Like we're gonna be from hot to cold to hot, like. All those things that is a factor that your body has to like deal with. So for those reasons, it's man, it's just it it's it the tough. little things like you're not going to get a good sleep because the air, the humidity there might be different than it's here. It's like you're going back and yeah, forth. Yeah, and then, exactly. Okay, maybe you have the nighttime flight. Oh, it got delayed because yes, fucking beers getting thrown at the sprinters today or whatever. Right? Yeah, and then yeah, you're going yeah. back and forth. So it's an I don't want to say nightmare, obviously, because you're get you're getting to do something you love and representing yeah, yeah. you know your country on a national scale mm-hmm. or international level, which is unbelievable. I love I love these things. Right? Like, yeah, you gotta like yeah, it's, it's, it, you deal with it. You know? with You're bad. professional. You deal with yeah. it. These things happen, and honestly, <clears throat> like you kind of embrace it because like that means that just shows the passion that these countries have. They're willing to do whatever, to throw whatever at you, and uh, they'll they'll wait outside your hotel, like I said, and just do fireworks <clears throat> the whole the whole night so you don't sleep. Like we're gonna send you a little care package: earplugs and uh, wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> That's it from the pals. That's it. <laughs> That you see the little babies and they got the earplugs and the big headphones on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Me and George are gonna send you some. That's it. Well, um, for the uh, for the qualifying, you guys. So you have six games left. Six. And yeah. how many? Because there's eight teams right now left. Yeah. How many make it from the eight teams total? So three uh, make it uh, straight through. The top three make it straight through, and the fourth place plays a playoff against uh, a a team from a different confederation. So. I think we got. I think Concacaf got drawn against um, 
an Oceania team. Oceania is like, Oce- New Z- it'll probably be New Zealand. Yeah. It'll most likely be New Zealand. Um, so the fourth place team will have to play a, a one game playoff. In the past, it was actually two legs, home and home. This year, because of, I guess, because yeah. of COVID and everything, they, they, they limited to one, just a one off. And so, yeah, we don't want that. We just want to go straight through obviously, top obviously, three. Yeah. Well, I guess this next this next stretch for you guys could probably set up a lot because I was actually looking at. I haven't. I, I knew you guys. Uh, I knew Canada was in first, but I didn't know like who's where and what. And it's pretty yeah. tight at the top. Like it's, it's tight. Yeah, you guys, USA. I don't. I don't know. If, I think Honduras and Panama. I think are the top, but it's all split by like a couple points. Yeah. So there, right now, our table is kind of split top and bottom. Yeah. So there's a top four that are really close to each other, and then there's a a pretty good gap and then there's the bottom yeah so we are we have a pretty good cushion right now in the top four which is good yeah but like i said like we want to be in the top three and the the race is tight between those four teams so it's us uh usa mexico and panama that's it mexico, mexico. right right yeah, so that's it's tight and and the thing is you know with these games um if you you can draw if you drop points the other teams can just jump you Absolutely. so Every game is important, you know, but um, yeah, I think it usually goes down to, to right to the last game, usually last two games. But I mean, I think in this case, because there's such a big gap between the four and the and the and the bottom and the bottom four, man, it, like this window could could define. Yeah, could define some things, really. So and I hope I hope that would I think that would be good for us when it'd be massive, obviously. And I mean, obviously, best of luck to you guys. Like it's uh, yeah. I mean, Thanks. you guys are playing like you're like lighting the world on fire which, and the team like it's actually exciting to watch. It's, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like you guys are, you know, not that we haven't had talent before and obviously, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of good players, but it's just it's it's amazing. And I, I think like. You know, Canada's rallied around a lot of teams before the Raptors yeah, and Jays yeah. back in the day. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the last time <laughs> soccer was at this level with the, this kind of young talent. Yeah, you know, yeah, veterans yeah. like you and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure the whole country's rooting for you guys. And if you guys get there, f- oh, I can't even imagine sure. what this would be like watching. Like, you, like it's cool when you see because you know the TSNs, the sports centers, and all those like these main Canadian yeah. channels. Like, I remember you scored that goal. Maybe was it two, three months ago? Yeah. And it's like it was all over TSN. The yeah, score, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. You like the stars posting it. Then you have the um, who did the snow angels in the snow? Oh yeah, month, uh, was it a month ago? A month and a half? Yeah, ago? yeah. November. It was yeah. uh, Sam. Sam. Yeah, Nicole, it's like yeah. boom all over <laughs> social media. It's yeah. like, that's how you know it's getting exciting. You yeah, can feel yeah. the excitement starting to happen. And then okay, you've got we've got um, when's the next World Cup? We're semi hosting it too. So it's that's like, right. Yeah, you know there's exciting things mm-hmm. happening. So, and then you got obviously Davies, who's one of the yes. best players in the world right yeah, now. Yeah. Like. I There's think not so only of- is he one of the best players, he's like proper famous. Yeah. Like on Instagram, his social oh, yeah. following, he's, like he's he's proper like famous. Yeah, he's, that from, helps. he's from Toronto. Toronto? No, no he's from Edmonton. 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 Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Played on the place to come from. Yeah. He played on the White Caps first too, right? He was like a 15-year-old on the White Caps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah 16-year-old yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he's from Edmonton. Like, they, he like started as a 16-year-old. Yeah, the White Caps yeah. scouted him, brought him to Vancouver and... He just good for boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it's good for you guys, though, man. Like honestly, like, the thing this is, is too is like it's that it's not like you know the U.S. is obviously like their population ten times ours. They have the money yeah, yeah, they yeah, play, yeah. they put into it, so they've been good for a while. Obviously, yeah. Mexico's good. I Central Mexico's America, been like Honduras, forever, all these yeah, teams are like, not pushovers, right? Yeah, Pan- yeah, yeah. Panama, I think, has been to the world. Yeah, they went recent. last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like not pushover teams. Right at Euro, uh, uh, Copa America too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, not push over teams. So, like, I mean, and that's a thing, right? That the biggest thing is you just got to get there. If you guys get there, like, I yeah. mean, as a Greek, I can tell you, anybody can, not anybody can win always, but I mean, all you just, you just need to get a- the foot in the door. Anything can happen. You never anything know. Anything can happen. Stuff and starts clicking. Like, it yeah. Just, I mean, the first step is, like, like you said, qualifying. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that alone is going to change so much for the sport here in this country, especially with the World Cup coming here. For sure. In 2026. It's 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 going to be crazy. Um, I know that for a fact. And and like you said, like here in Canada, like we get our we get behind our teams, like like the Raptors, like the Jays when they're when they're doing well, and and on all these teams, Leafs, of course, mm-hmm. um, and even TFC. We saw when when we oh, won. Absolutely, stuff, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. So I think this is on a bigger like like because it's the world and it's international, and it's the whole country. It's going to be like. It's going to be huge, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. That's why I'm hoping we do good in this window, and like we can define it 
So that Moving like forward, yeah. that game in March, because we ha- we have a game in March. I'm not sure where that's going to be played. Hoping in Toronto, but I imagine like let's say we're already qualified. I don't want to jinx anything. Yeah, absolutely. But if we're already qualified by then, like that that game is a it's like a celebration and that's nice homecoming. It's good. Yeah, it's going to be. It's nuts. just nice to have World Cup qualifying games in like Toronto, just even Hamilton. Discussion. Yeah, like, to have like discussion. Yeah, yeah, to be in the conversation, cool. even sitting here having these conversations like this, like just talking with somebody yeah, yeah. who's you know playing for the the team here, but also playing on like the national or international mm-hmm. level. I I'm honestly I, Hamilton. I don't know if they've I, if they've announced if fans can go or not. But I'm for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I don't care if it's minus twenty two. Like yeah, if they allow yeah. fans, I'll be there. I don't care if it's snow. I think it'd be sick to see a game in the snow. But I can't yeah, imagine yeah. we'd have to play that. <laughs> but kinda, there was tough, in but. Edmonton. Was, like, so we played in Edmonton. Like the first game was not bad. I think I think it was around zero. That, that that's 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 normal. Like, that's normal. Like you, you can play you in grew that up easy. here. Right? Yeah, you can play yeah. in that easy. The second game. The second game was minus sixteen. I think. And we were playing on that turf, and there was snow. It, it there was a snowstorm the, the night before, yeah, the day they had before. The lawnmowers out. They oh, it was not the lawnmowers. Snow the snowmowers. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh, that was that was tough. That was like you could feel it that game. And, and you know, credit to everybody who played because uh, it was still a great game with great quality. You know, and and. But it was cold. That 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 day was really really. I should cold. picture taking a header with the balls almost. Oh like- man. Because the air, it basically gets, uh, I think it gets yeah, harder. like freezing. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's the worst part about, like, besides obviously the cold, but like the one, like, is it like, you know, ripping a shot, like, did it break your foot? Is your hands and they're numb? You, you can't slide. Like, what is the, yeah, what's the worst single thing, like, that you would, that you can't do? Like, just. So for me, I, I didn't start that game. So I was on the bench and we had two, like, kind of vents on each side. We had two vents on each side and. They're blowing uh, hot air, yeah. uh, heat. But the bench was kind of long because there was the like there was like two kind of benches, one for the coaches and then for the players, and it was coming on each side. But if you're standing in the if you're standing in the middle, you're not getting it. <laughs> like you're not feeling it. And I got stuck in the middle, of course. <laughs> so I'm watching the game, and I'm stuck in the middle, and. I, I they had hot tea for us on the bench, which was pretty nice, and that would help for like five minutes. Five minutes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And but then the worst was this: the second half started. The coach asked some guys had guys warming up, ready to go in. And on the side where we warm up, there was a snow banks, and they they tried to to get it off the field as much as possible. But they got it off the field, but then like off the field, the the space where we warm up. The snow's kind of still there. It's minus 16. So you're trying to run through, just forgetting about it, but you're obviously your body, you know, when something cold goes on you, it starts to melt. Obviously, you're, we have warm bodies. You start to step in the snow, and it starts to like, it, it, you're basically, your feet are getting wet, but it starts to freeze. So as soon as you stop, you're like, you're warming up. You, it starts to freeze and literally my my toes are getting frozen. That was for me the worst part. So I'd have to go warm up five minutes, run, run back to the bench and put my feet in the vent for like five minutes. Then warm up another five minutes, come back. Put my, that that for me was the worst, the toes. The toes, if they get wet in the snow and then you try to play, it's it's over. Miserable. Who, who, what team were you playing that game? Mexico. I'm just picturing these, some of these, like, p- these players that they might not have ever even seen snow. Yeah, it doesn't snow. In Mexico, no, they haven't. Right? Like, some of these people might have never seen snow, and then you come to a place like Edmonton, minus sixteen. Home field advantage, honestly, has home to field be advantage. Like, in that I, case, like, home how field can advantage. You not argue that. Yeah, that's a good point. That's like, home field advantage for yeah. sure. Like, and you know what? Credit to them. A lot of the guys took it well. They're playing. I know we thought Costa Rica was gonna um, uh, deal with it badly, and some of their guys came out in short sleeves. And mentally, I was like, "Oh shit, these guys are these guys are." T- I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Yeah, that. you're yeah, fine. My bad. Um, I was like, "Oh, like shit, these guys are taking it good." Like that was a really good mental uh, win there for yeah. them, yeah. you know. But the Mexicans, no, no, and the minus sixteen, there's there's no there's no hiding it. There's no <laughs> minus sixteen. It's minus sixteen. Yeah. I would. Like, ne- they've never, seen, they've never yeah. seen like five degrees. Yeah, yeah, 10 yeah, degree. yeah. No, you oh. could wear like parkas. You still be cold in that. Yeah, <sighs> you're cold no matter what. Um, going back one second, we were talking about the excitement around the World Cup, and the reason why this is so good is because remember when J- Carter came to the Raptors in ninety five, ninety six. 
<clears throat> look what happened 20 years later or 15 years later or Carter came in, sorry, 99, I think. You think about 20 years later, the Canadian men's basketball team is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. guys like Corey Joseph up, the Alexander uh, Cousins. I forget the... Um, Shy, oh, Shy Gil, just Alexander, yeah, and then Nikhil, there's Nikhil Alexander. Yeah, there's those two. You had <laughs> R.J. Barrett, you yeah, had yeah. Anthony Bedoke okay, turned out to be a little bit of a bust, but like you've got good guys coming through the system now. Mm -hmm. And this is what's gonna I mean, be like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, you've got a lot of good players coming through. And like, <clears throat> if you think about it, now that little kids are growing up playing baseball, playing hockey, but they're playing soccer too. But now it's like, hey, we see that like that's you know little kids are gonna be like, hey, I want to be Cristiano Ronaldo, I want to be this. It's like, hey, I want to be that. I'll, now you have you're gonna see the. Canadians playing potentially playing on the biggest stage in the world. And yeah, little kids watching that are gonna say that's gonna be me in fifteen years. Oh, for sure, right? like, for sure. They're already saying this, like seeing the qualifier games. Like, yeah. oh, that, that's that's what like we're, when we were we're kids. Gonna do. But I like, think oh, we'll never be. Like, that's well, possible. no, but I think it'll. Like, this is just my opinion. I don't know if it's true. I mean, you can speak this more than we can. But I also think that like it, it started sooner than that because I think it start it truly started like when TFC released like came here. Ball. Yeah, because like when we got yeah. TFC, when we got a legitimate, they got a stadium like. Yeah, okay. Like, I mean, obviously, like, yeah, being in the like, yeah, Team Canada yeah. helps. But the problem was, like, I, I wouldn't say, like, Canada's always had talented soccer players. Yeah. I mean, like, you grew up Canadian. Like, you know, yeah. you've been playing for this team for how long now? There's a lot of guys that have grown up, even maybe before you. But the problem was, when we didn't have teams here, people would leave and go play Europe. Yes, and they yes. changed their citizenship. Yes. Like, I think there's two guys that play. They were twins. They played in the Netherlands, maybe, or something. So there was, yeah, there was... Uh they weren't twins. They're brothers, maybe. They're brothers, but one played for Canada. But they don't played for the played for Holland, I think. They, they so the the younger brother played for Holland yeah. and like played in the World Cup and everything. Yeah, but he's he's from here. They're from Scarborough. J the Guzman is his yeah, name. yeah. So Jonathan J Jono, he played in a World Cup with Holland. Had a great career. Played in all these big teams and, and like really, he's Canadian. You know, like yeah. we missed out on him, and that's because during the, his time, there was no Toronto FC. There was no academy no there is no professional team here so <clears throat> you always had to go away and there was a lot less opportunities back in the day to be canadian and then find a way and, and become a professional uh soccer player now there's a lot more opportunities so you're seeing like you're like probably with basketball the same thing yeah you're seeing a lot more opportunities you're seeing okay, all it takes is one guy to be successful and then you know for example okay I don't know how to. I was gonna say, but I was gonna say Vince Carr, but Vince Carr is not is not uh, Steve Nash or Steve Nash. Steve Nash, you know, it, it becomes successful. So now these college teams are like, okay, there there's a market over there. Yeah, we we yeah, gotta start yeah. looking for more players over there because look, the MVP of the NBA is Canadian. That's similar. Back to I back. think similar in soccer. Back to back. Similar in soccer. I think one player makes it, the other player goes, another one makes it, and now it's happening. It happened recently. Um, you know, Alfonso Davies went to Bayern Munich. I signed to Bayern Munich. Uh, soon later, uh, Kyle Lahren went to, to, to Europe. Then we had Jonathan David. And now we have all these guys in Europe because all these European teams are seeing there's more like Alfonso yep, Davies yep. out there. Maybe not Alfonso Davies, but there's more like him. There's talent there. And and that's how it starts. It takes one to be successful and then to, to create the belief for all these other people yeah. and that's really how how it blows up. Yeah, and I think I think to your point, the World Cup aspect like puts the like the that's like the stamp. Like I would say the that's more yeah, yeah, that's more like okay, like this whole country is legit now. Yes, and everything. Yes, that so is. it's like we've kind of like it's not like um, you found a diamond in the rough with Alfonso. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, it's yeah. Like, now they're oh, all oh shit. Okay, here. well now this now, this whole team. But right? yes, yes. But this also leads to the next point too. Like why why my thought is more it's like the TFC and like the MLS approach and like um, North America is getting more legitimized. Yes, because North America is like if you think about like immigration, like you know I, I would venture to guess like a lot of people whether they look at the U.S. and Canada, like it's a place where you can go and have opportunity. You like it's like people can go and make it whether it's you know capitalism or sports, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Like there's opportunity. It's a land of opportunity. It's where yes. it's been um, labeled as. But because MLS is growing, people are watching soccer more. It's an international game, and now which kind of segues perfectly, you have massive international stars coming wanting yeah. to put their mark on this league. I mean, it yeah. started with Be it was just Beckham back in the day. Yeah, Beckham started. Pelé it. started it. Actually. Pelé, yeah, that's right. Cosmos. If you really want to go back, I, did, I like I did that. Not know that. I like Pelé? that. That's, that's a big fact. <laughs> this is fact. I'm Brazilian. Yeah. I'm Brazilian, so that's how I know. So Pelé, the right after his. Uh, I think the second World Cup or the third World Cup because Pelé won three, I think. I think it was after the third one. After the third World Cup. So he was around 33, I think, and still like 
a superstar. And prior to Messi and Ronaldo, Pele was the great. Yeah, yeah. In there soccer. was Pele. I would say it was it was there was Pele, and then after Maradona. Pele came Maradona. Yeah, Maradona. But this was at that time there was no Maradona, there was no Maradona yet. Yeah, there was no I think so. So he came here, and then it was the New York Cosmos. I yes. think they were called, mm -hmm. and he was the one like the first real superstar that came and put his stamp on. That's the interesting. Yeah. yeah. He came again, towards, must have, back then, the quality of soccer, he must have just danced circles around. Guys. Yeah, well, but he also came for the entertainment factor, right? Yeah, yeah. Again, sure. he, it's like when Wayne Gretzky went to the LA Kings, okay? Like, he wow. went there for like, it's a little different, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger league, but yes, yes. Yeah, but it's like you bring a superstar into a big market to help grow the sport. For yes, sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. What it was. That's yeah. was that's an MLS team, though? Or yeah, is it a different New York league? Cosmos no, MLS didn't, didn't exist. It was, it was the American, American... NASL, I think it was called. I uh, was actually, I don't know. soccer league. We have a laptop, Danielle. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, Danielle, well, she's picking it up. Yeah, so he was the first. But again, there was a massive gap between that and then the rebranding and or yeah, whatever yes, it is. Yes. I don't know how it worked. So I, then the, the World Cup came to uh, the United States in, in 94. My dad, I have a ticket stub. My dad went to a game. I think it was in Chicago maybe or okay, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad, I think, saw I it could have been Greece versus Argentina. And I think Greece got absolutely slapped like five nothing or something yeah, yeah. i think it was greece argentina oh maradona i think scored that game uh yeah. maradona scored he scored that game and then right after that game possibly he um he was kicked out of the turn tournament for uh tournament for for doping come on yeah he had ephedrine uh for ephedrine i think it was or something like that uh, you can't take it oh ephedrine i think is like uh it's like um, it's like a it increases your like heart rate, yeah, it, like it yeah, clears, yeah. like it opens up your sinuses. I think it makes something you, like, something like that. I think it was ephedrine. I think, um, but something he he took a, a supplement and I don't know what yeah. happened, and there was Got something in it he didn't know, and and you yeah, they would have. Did you think because they, they would they would have won that one? You think they think that they he could have brought them again far because the last two World Cups before that. Um, uh, there was 86 in Mexico, which he won, and then 90 in Italia, uh, where they came second. And then 94, he was still really, really good. But obviously, all that, all that stuff. I happened. think 94 is when um, Thing missed the free kick, Baggio. Baggio, yeah, the penalty. Yeah, the penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The penalty, yeah. who? Because uh, Brazil won that one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, France on that note, like the, 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 going uh, back to what we were saying, like with with. I think that's another big thing to kind of bring it back is like all these big stars. I mean, like even recent. I mean, massive signing with TFC, yeah, um, which is which is huge. Like you guys, I mean, massive. Um, but yeah, I think that's also like huge. Like kids, people are seeing like you can come play here. People want to be here, right? Like, yeah, and yeah. that's what's cool because like you know when you think about it, like the Raptors were the biggest example of this. People always said nobody wants to sign in Toronto. Nobody mm. wants to sign in Toronto. So they trade for Kawhi and look what happened. But it's crazy because, like, Insigne, that, that's a signing, right? Like, yeah, he came, yeah. like, all this stuff happening, but it's happening all over. It's happening with, like, you know, I think Ibrahimovic went to whatever, um, LA. LA. LA Galaxy, yeah. yeah. People want to come play in North America. Well, and, like, Pirlo went to Montreal, too, another Canadian yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, Pirlo. Uh, no, Pirlo went to New York City. Um, Marco Divayo went to Montreal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had some big players. They had Alessandro Nesta, too, Nesta, at yeah. one point. Um, Didn't Carnavale go to New York, too? There was another Italian defenseman who went to somewhere in like this part of north of uh, like U.S. Canada. There was Matteo Ferrari. He was he went to Montreal. I can't remember. Montreal gets a lot of the Italians just because it's Montreal. Right? Yeah, because Saputo. Big, yeah, what Joey, that? Joey Saputo. Uh -huh. He's the owner. He's like big. He's is that, is it, Saputo he, is like food. I think it's cheese. cheese. That's what it is. Like huge. I know there's a, there's a massive Italian <laughs> community and plus like. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on the podcast because I don't know if it's actual fact, but like Montreal's kind of racist. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> it's like if you're an Italian league, oh, sorry, no, you're an Italian based kind of team. Like I know people in Montreal are racist because that's what the whole idea with like PK Subban. Oh, I don't know that. That's I don't, right. know, that. I don't know if this, so I don't want to say it because it's speculation. <laughs> it's like, I don't know what the correlation is. But the point I was yeah. making was I'll that tell, tell it I, think, I think, let's go <laughs> back, to, let's bring it back to the point of like, I think with like, you know, T like MLS establishing, obviously World Cup, and now with these like big yeah. signs coming here, I think soccer, especially in like somewhere in Toronto, like it's a massive amount of like immigrants every yes. year, like kids coming up. I think soccer is going to keep booming. I, maybe I said this, I don't know, on the last podcast with you, I, I can't remember, but I, I genuinely believe that like if you, like MLS, I think North American. So I think MLS, the league itself, 
the like the value of teams, the level of players, like everything, cost of tickets, whatever you want to call it, is gonna skyrocket. Maybe not right away, but incrementally. If you go ten years from now, fifteen years from now, which is not a long time in terms of the length of the league, mm-hmm. I think it'll be one of the higher watched, maybe not highest watched sports, but it'll be up there. Like it'll be considered like a legitimate big team or big. What do they call it? The big, uh, yeah, the big four, the big four, whatever it's called. Or whatever, Just look yeah. at the NBA in like the early eighties and nineties. Like the NBA was, or maybe let's say eighties. Like the NBA was the NBA, but like it wasn't like today. Yeah. You can get sit courtside for like a hundred bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Teams were not like it wasn't superstars. You might have one good team. Twenty years later, it's I think one of the biggest sports growing faster and faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think like yeah, all this stuff, it's good stuff happening for the for the teams. And I, I think, think it's NBA gonna, was seventies because the eighties was Johnson and Larry Bird, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 it takes a while. Maybe ten years, yeah. fifteen is an exaggeration, but I mean, I think honestly, by the time the World Cup gets here, man, it's it's gonna at least here blow up. And I know in the United States they had like I know the MLS for a fact has the objective to be like a top league yeah. in the world. Um, the, the, it's improving every year, and it's getting there. I'm saying like they want to be spoken about with like Premier League and these mm-hmm. kind of leagues. I don't know if it could ever get there just because the the structure and everything of those four leagues have been intact for so long already. It's ingrained in the culture of yeah, the countries yeah, too and everything. Exactly. I don't know how you can ever take over that, but you can get close and that's I think that's their goal for sure. Well, I think the biggest and the best part about it is that you have USA, which is one of the largest countries in the world. Mm. You have set, like... Okay, a lot of people playing in Saudi Arabia, a lot of them are Italian too, yeah. right? A lot of playing in the English Premier are English. Yeah. Obviously, there's imports and whatever. But if you think about it, the U.S. is what, 300 million, 360 million? Something give, like or, give or take. So between the North America, and, uh, you got what, 400 million, give or take. Yeah. You have an insanely large pool of potential players that would love to play in their home City yeah, yeah, state. for sure. When has the league gets better and has these superstars start to come from overseas mm-hmm. here? Because before us, you were a superstar here, you ended up going over yeah. there. Now it's starting to come here with the Beckhams and uh-huh. everyone we just said. Well, now it's at the point where people are coming here, they're going to stay here, yeah. grow, the sport's growing. And eventually, again, we none of us have a crystal ball, but yeah. if you put the right money into it and you have the right people behind it, and it can yeah. easily grow. Oh, easy, easy. And to your point, now, see, now you see all these players coming most recently, Insigne deciding to come here when he could have went anywhere. anywhere. 30 um, years old. And in his prime, you know, more players are going to see that and, and come over here. The salaries are just going to go up and up and up as as the teams get more valuable. So you can start paying players more mm-hmm. to, to lure, lure them over here. Once you get the best players over here, the best players that are here are not going to go over leave. there. They're going to stay at home to yeah, play. Yeah. Of course. They're going to stay at home. And to your point of, of you know, United States and even Canada being, you know, the land of the free and stuff like that where there's so much opportunity, why wouldn't those people, those players over there come over here when you, they can, like, you know, work on their, their brand, let's say, Absolutely. and stuff like that on top of playing yep. so that they're set for life, not, not only with the money that they make. Uh, in their professional careers, but like even after, you Absolutely. know what I mean? Well, it's a big, like one of the big things too is uh, like to, uh, to care on that point. You got to think about like what, what sports and like things like business and brands have now like so, in, intermingled even more. Brands has always been tied to sports, whether it's Nike, Jordan, people building their own brands. Like mm. that's, that's kind of been around f- for a long time, but you know, being, let's say, a, a pro athlete in Toronto, mm-hmm. naturally, especially with a company like MLSC owning, you just bump into the right, the right people. Yeah, opens up yeah, business opportunities. yeah, exactly. If you're playing in LA or or whatever, New anywhere York. in that, California, New York, yeah. like you're, you're just naturally going to be exposed to more opportunities. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, one of the things is United America Credit, you know, everyone wants to say that, you know, the population of China is growing faster in, in India, not to get too deep into that. But if you look at all the biggest companies in the world, whether it's tech, whether it's anything, like the majority on the top of anything or startups, whatever it is, come from America, yeah, North yeah. America. So like it just, there's a lot of other benefits of being here as well. Yeah. But again, like this, it's all, North America has always been multicultural, which is interesting that it's just like soccer and MLS is just kind of now getting to the point where it's yeah. getting, you know, world recognition yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. But anyways, I, I like, I think it's what the losing is amazing. And it's, I mean, like no one can go like the the best part of soccer is you don't need to be a, a like a diehard sports fan or rocket scientist to know what's happening. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a yeah. very 
I mean, to know the strategy and everything, like you have to know the game. But yeah, yeah. you can walk into a stadium, watch soccer. You know, the ball's got to go in the net. Yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. need to know what every foul is. Some guy gets hurt. It's a foul, like it's yeah. straightforward. Yeah. The game is flowing. It's it's free flowing. Exactly. So there's not many stoppages and stuff. So it's just always going, which which is good. Um, you know, and and it's not and like yeah. it's too long either. Like it's you know, yeah, like you know baseball. exactly how long a game is. Baseball could be three hours. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You know, soccer it's two forty fives with the fifteen in between. Yeah, Maybe yeah. add an extra five on each end. And yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. You know, two hours, you're out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's uh, so good. I want to ask you about Insignia. Obviously, maybe aside from Davies, he'll probably be one of the best players you'll ever play with. Yeah. What's that like for you now as, as a teammate, as a person that, okay, you've seen the highs of the high with TFC. You've seen some low moments. Mm -hmm. Again, now you're kind of stepping back into that, that high moment. Yeah, yeah. What's it like? So, I mean, it's exciting. One, this, this guy just literally this past summer won the Euro Cup with Italy. Uh, being an important player for them, so you know it, it's crazy. I mean, like I've I've I've, I've been fortunate enough to play with um, really great players, like coming and in their primes as well. Like I mean, Seba Jovinko came in his yeah, prime yeah, as well, yeah. and I would and, and they're very similar. I you know people will argue saying that Insigne on a, a little bit of a higher level just because at Napoli and with the Italian team he won the Euro Cup, so. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, th this is good. It it changes the league because I was saying too to like to 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 my teammates like so he's coming over. The thing is as well like in Italy, there's a lot of pressure for sure. There's a lot of pressure when you especially playing at Napoli within the the city. There's a lot of pressure to be to be good and all that stuff. But he's coming here, and some people say uh, I think it's the league is starting to lose its reputation, but it used to be a reputation of a retirement league. So all these big stars yeah, would come yeah. to retire, but it's losing that reputation now because people are coming in their primes. And so he's coming, but he's coming with pressure too, because, because of what Jovinko did, you know, now he's getting paid like what double probably, which is crazy. Uh, and they're going to expect the same thing from him. And it's not that easy. It's, it's just not that easy. And so, for that reason, it's exciting because now if a player... I can only imagine after the season if somebody does do better than Insigne, they're just going to tell their club, like, so Insigne is worth this. I just did better than him. Now what am I worth? It, it changes the league. Yeah. Changes the league. So for many different reasons, this is huge for the city, for, for the league, for everything. And for me to play with a guy of that caliber uh, is going to be... It, it can only improve me, to be honest, to, to just be around it. Is the team for the most part, I, and I'm not sure if you can like answer this up, but like, are most of the guys back? Is the same team as last year? Like, as much changed? No, or, a lot's changed. A lot's changed. Yeah, yeah. From oh, last wow. year, a lot, a lot has changed. But that's what happens here in Toronto. You know, uh, like at Toronto FC, we're actually it's actually uh, it's we're fortunate now to have that expectation to be one of the better teams in the league every year. That's that's their goal. That's their you know their objective. Um, and and MLSC is is showing that with the investment that they're putting now after a bad season. And um no, there's gonna be a lot of change, like a lot of change. Um we won't have the same team at all. A lot of players have already gone. Um they still need to bring in a lot of players, but um I think all that will be happening in really 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 soon. Well the good part about that is that once you have that big signing, you know that this organization is dumping hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. into this team you know that other players that work hey i don't know if i want to play in north america where it's like okay you just saw this massive superstar come over there's opportunity yes and a company like mls isn't just going to throw 100 million dollars at one player i don't know the exact amount whatever it was but it's, it's a, a lot. lot it's a lot yeah. you're not going to dump all this money into one player and say ah it doesn't matter about everybody else no, yeah. you're going to build a team yes you're going to throw money into marketing and community and building the, the yeah. whole city around it oh yeah right just sure. like again what same thing happened with jovinko's yeah you dump all this money so it's like you want results and results yeah. came so. yeah 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 i mean it it's it's just the way the way it is when you when you invest usually if you invest enough and, and smart you, yep. you you get the return yeah you get the return you guys have and the thing is too when you i think like Right now, to your point, like I, I do agree with that. Like the MLS is changing from like a you know retirement league to like a legitimate like soccer league that's yeah. being recognized, right? Because obviously these signings and these things that happen, but even going back, you know, even 
Ebro coming here or some other t- like time as you mentioned <laughs> like the world notices that people say oh this is like you sign in there like yeah. that's not just like our guy going there it's all mm-hmm. news in Italy it's news in any country that plays soccer and has a major league um, but when you look back like TFC has gone what three finals is it three five? one one but gone to three in the last like five three three and four years wasn't it yeah. it was three and four years and now a couple years have gone by so it's it's three and six right so like that's a lot like that's a if you look at all the teams that exist in this league, I, I mean, I, I don't know the stat. Like, is that probably up there with the, oh, the tops? Most sure. final appearances. Like, maybe the guys. Us and Sounders. I was going to say, you played South the Sounders, Sounders twice. They three. actually went to one more than us. They went to. So we went to three, they went to four. They won yeah. two. They right? won two yeah. and lost two. So I was there when, when they won one of them. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. The game I was the one. Yeah. I was, I was, at, I'm at, was I with you? I was, was there, I was there when TFC they lost and, and when they lost to the I was Sounders. at both, yeah. So I think the other time when you guys lost the Sounders, it was there. It was there. The other time was there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, that's the other thing with, M- with MLS. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I honestly, I do love going to games. Um, but, like, with you said, to your point, them spending the money, like, if you really think about it, when you look back on this, like, you know when you always wonder, like, are you in the best years? Like, you know, and people are, like, watching Jordan and Thing yeah, win for yeah. six years. It's like, oh, like, when you're in it, you don't, you don't, maybe, you appreciate it, but you don't really realize, oh, shit, the run's gonna end at, like, some point. Not to be a downer, not yeah, to say yeah, it might yeah, end, yeah, yeah. but, like, to do what the team has done that many times, like, like you're already one, you're already one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. To add this in, like, we could be theoretically in in the like in the thick of like seeing a a, a crazy run happen again now, yeah, yeah. which is a big deal, right? So, you know, as the league's coming up, Toronto's establishing itself as you know that marquee team that invests that that yeah. organization. That's pretty big to lay that foundation right now. So oh, I mean, it's huge, yeah. You know? I, and you having know, again homegrown talent that plays for the team two yeah, yeah. in their city, like it's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that's exactly it. And and around the world, you know, I think the 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 good thing that MLS has is is which all um North American sports has is kind of like parity in the league, right? They have the the salary cap rules. That kind of any team can win in, in, in any year if you do things right with management and players. It's not like this in it's not like this in Europe. In Europe, like there's every club is its own um owned by by its own company or whatever, and then there's a league that's owned by itself. Like in the MLS, the league owns basically all the teams. It, uh, more or less. It's it's hard to explain. Sure. But the the teams are owned by the league, whereas in Europe every team is owned by themselves and so any owner can come and and put as much money as they want there's no real rules there's financial uh fair play rules which is basically luxury tax kind of like you can't you can't spend um more than uh a certain percentage of your um your your club's uh income okay i don't know the exact rules but it's not like MLS where yeah. there's a salary cap. Isn't that how uh, was it? Not Manchester City. Uh, no, Manchester City. So Didn't Newcastle, for example, New- Newcastle recently got bought by a, a three hundred uh, billion dollar company. So now this team is is at the bottom, but now they can they have so much to invest. So they yeah. can they have money to buy really really good players, and they can get out of the bottom and even compete for the league in the next two or three years. Manchester City is owned by the... Is some like Prince or something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some, wow. It's, it's, it's really all oil much. money, the to family, be honest. Uh, so. The royal family. Yeah, they just bought... Not the royal family Bin, bought Bin, Newcastle. Bin, oh, yeah. and also some uh, M- MBS. Is that that well, regardless, like some really... Ri- I know it was yeah, about yeah, five owns, years ago. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Who owns Newcastle and opens Man City? Man City's the baby blue team. Yes. Yeah, yeah so some like... I know this rich owner came in and just bought, bought a whole bunch of really good players because... Who was a, there was a really good player that went a striker and they were trying to sign that. Ronaldo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah but they yeah. wouldn't like obviously that they. And I want to deviate. Go finish. Yeah. No, I, I was just saying it's like that's what it's it's insane when you can do that because it's not. I don't want to say it's not fair, but if you're on a team that has a just a ri- a normal rich owner, and then you have a team that's got a top point zero 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 one percent of the world rich yeah yeah how is that fair this guy can just go out and spend more money like so that's how that's it's it it is fair in the sense that any like that owner can go buy any team yeah like a poor team and they can become rich that's the fair part to it but yes to your point like that's why the same teams win the league every year in these leagues maybe premier league there's about six or seven that have a chance and that's why it's the most competitive league but in italy like juventus won it for the last nine years spain it, is it, like barcelona barcelona real, real madrid exactly it. so 
That's the difference oh, that MLS French, has. The French, the French league too, right? It's always yeah. Now PSG, it's Paris. They're yeah. just way you know they they have way more money. Before used to have a bunch like you remember there used to be AC Milan, Inter yes. Milan, Juventus, yeah, 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 yeah. Roma, Lazio. There used to be a lot more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, now it's like just yeah. Juve Juventus at one point like just last ten years exactly. So um, between Buffon, it was Buffon, Del Piero, and then you had the the Ronaldo saga. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like MLS has that. And honestly, we got kind of sidetracked, so I've, I've lost my point now. No, but, it's all good. But, We're talking uh, about fair play rules with MLS or salary caps? No. What, what was the question? <laughs> uh, who knows? Uh, something about invest the money in the team. Maybe why? what's attracting people yeah, to the yeah, MLS. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, now, oh, now. I was talking about the years, like how that's, uh, TFC is building on its reputation of like maybe yeah, okay, the good so years. That, that's yeah, what I was going. So yeah, TFC yeah. wants to be in a parody league like a super club. So they want to be a team in what is a parody league. They still want to be known as like a Juventus, what a Juventus is to the Italian league. They're God. always going to be on top. God. So that's what that's what Toronto FC is is fighting, is trying to be. To build that reputation. In a parody league, days, yeah. that's harder to do. So For that sure. would be that would be amazing. Exactly. If you have the that's reputation, the then it's like when somebody wants to come over, whether it's the next, you know, whatever his name is the next top talent that wants to come and say you know what I'm the best player in Europe I'm the best player in the world I got five good years left let me go make a couple hundred million in, in, in North America I TFC start- is the best team I'm going to TFC yes exactly they get first dibs at the players they yeah, want to exactly, have exactly. And, and that's how it should be because think about it, a lot of players can come and build start to get their after soccer lives ready yeah yeah I yeah. mean like look at Beckham now he's the owner of uh, he's part of Inter Miami, Miami yeah. Inter Miami mm-hmm. right you had, uh, I think there was another player that came to New York that ended up staying in New York to live there. Yeah. Because again, there's a lot more, opp- or maybe that's unfair to say, but there's a lot of opportunities in North America. For sure. I think also too, for to, to raise their families, their kids, it's also a little bit better than yeah. in wherever places, in some places in Europe. And also there's there's like, man, fans in Europe are, are crazy. And if you play at a, at a club with high expectations and you don't do well, you can't even show your face on the streets, you know? Whereas here, you know, you have that pressure from the fans and whatever, and, 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 and the media can be, you know, really on top of you, but you can still walk down the street. You don't, uh, after a loss, like nobody's going to... No one's on your case. No one's going to throw stuff at you or whatever, you know? Over there is, is a bit different. So in that sense, they, they, they like... on you here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, but exactly. It's so true, and... <laughs> That's why those players also like coming here, and that's why they stay here and live. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure Jovinko, you know, his family stays here. Yeah. 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 Well, on that note, I think it's it's time that we start How to wrap. Uh, probably about an hour and a half, oh, give or take. Hour and seven. Wow. Yeah. Not bad. Well, Jonathan. <laughs> I've never called you Jonathan. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it, it, listen, I I don't want to like not jinx it, knock on wood, but the last time we had you on. People, if, like anyone who would listen, this is like you know the early days. It was like, we, like it was gonna a week before the season, like the season started. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about we had like we had tickets to go to the game. We we're gonna go. I was whatever. Just gonna tell the story of how we got him on the first time for like those who don't. Oh, know. you go ahead. I was gonna say like it's crazy. It's come full circle. Yeah. We're back again, but like a month to the month and a bit to the next TFC yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Not fingers crossed. No, okay. Fingers yeah. crossed. Touch wood. Touch wood. We, uh, but man, it's exciting. Hopefully everything goes like back to normal and all that stuff. But even even so, as long as you're playing here, that's what we hope for. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. All the for best sure. this year, man. Thanks, yeah. man. So it's an exciting. I mean, it's exciting every year. TFC always has a competitive team. Always has great players. Yeah, and it's always nice to root for guys. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Even guys in the team. So, yeah, I know. La- last year was was a tough year, but I'm sure this year we'll be we'll be back fighting. And yeah, it's exciting, man. Hopefully, it's a little bit more normal than um, what the last two years has been. Um, but yeah, man, not. Guys, it's always a pleasure coming on. Congrats to you guys too, man. You guys just keep blowing up, man. <laughs> for, I, I see you. I see you guys, yeah. man. For those who it. make it to the end of this and actually listen to, we appreciate <laughs> you. But John, that was our first like real like actual guest that we had on. Like we had Eric Radford, who was an Olympian gold medal, but like yeah, that's nobody right, really yeah. knew him. Like you were like our first like kind of like all right, fuck yeah, this guy's legit. Like plays TFC. Like we've watched him play. We, we paid money to see this guy play. <laughs> like, season ticket holders here. <laughs> but yeah, like we just fucking DM'd you, and then we we ran into each other at the Leaf game, or was it Raptor game or something? Um, I think it was, it was a rap. So it was a rap. It was a rap. So it was a rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Club. I was like, yeah. me? No, no I saw you did. I was like, I, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What's yeah, up, man? Right. He's like, yo, how you doing? Man? When am I coming on? I'm like, bro, whenever you want. Yeah, you tell me when you're available. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's always open, man. That's literally yeah. exactly. How I, it's exactly. He's like, oh, how's the pod going? When am I coming back? I'm like, 
bro, you guys, Team Canada, like, bro, you're all over Sportsnet right now, bro. I saw that goal. <laughs> Gotta get you back on. But yeah, man, it's, yeah, we, uh, we appreciate you fitting the yeah. schedule too, because obviously we know a lot. You got a lot going on this next yeah, uh, no. next next couple of weeks. So yeah, yeah. good luck with Team Canada too. Thanks, man. guys, man. Yeah, appreciate yeah. you. Appreciate uh, and That's again, awesome. if people want to find out more about you, what you're doing, Team Canada, everything, where can they go? How can they find you? Just go on Sports Center. And- <laughs> 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 no man just good. no just I, I hope you know just tune in and and, and follow uh, um, the Canadian national team obviously we got the games at the end of this month and we need everybody we need the country we want the yeah. country behind us and then you know I'm at TFC so um, yeah just it, hopefully we, we, we get the fans back and we get full stadiums this year and yeah, so if you want to catch me, I'll be at the stadium. I'll be at the my field. field. <laughs> and on Instagram, it's also 21, oh, it's, I think. It's J also 21. J also 21. So give him a follow too. And other than that, subscribe, send it to your friends, give us a follow, all those fun things. Sick, Sick guys. Signing off. Cheers. See ya. You like to drink and to smoke to take away the pain. And I don't remember all of my mistakes in every eye. I got alone with no one thing. You're not alright. I'm not alright. Yeah. Uh-huh.